Hi, so this wasn't my idea. This was suggested to me by Ivan Rojas. So thank you very much for that, Ivan, because I thought it was an awesome idea. Ivan had a look at the video on where we made an induction motor into a generator, and he said, hey, Rob, do you know you can turn an alternator into a motor? And I thought, no, I didn't, but that's an awesome idea. So I had a look at some of the links he sent me, and I thought, yep, I'm going to give that a go. So what I've got here is an alternator. Now, I pulled this from a scrap car, so it cost me absolutely zero. Just the effort of undoing the three bolts. If we undo that, if I can undo that, we can have a look at what it's like inside. Now, I'm going to undo it, show it on the larger scale, but then we'll zoom in and have a close-up, and we'll talk about some of the connections in here. Now, an alternator, actually, is surprisingly similar, or it looks similar, to a motor. But it is, in fact, a generator. It developed from the dynamo. In the dynamo, what you do is you rotate a magnet with a fixed field in a coil, and that generates the current, obviously. With an alternator, what you do is you create an electromagnet with a fixed field, and you rotate that and that generates a current. Now, in the same way that we did the induction generator, you can turn an alternator into a um, self-starting freestanding uh, device just by feeding it a current, by putting a couple of capacitors on the brushes and then feed, drawing off the current that you want on the uh, right windings. So it's quite easy to turn an alternator into a freestanding generator. It doesn't need to be in a car. But to turn it into a motor, I thought was an awesome idea. Because this one that I've got here, as I say, just cost me the effort of undoing the three bolts. And it apparently makes a pretty decent motor. So I've got a pretty decent motor here for the effort that I'm going to put in to doing the conversion, which I thought was cool. Also, apparently, just about every single alternator you can buy these days is wired up in the needed configuration. I think it's a Delta configuration. I don't doubt that somebody will um, correct me if I've got that wrong. <coughs> they can be a little stiff. So we just persuade that off. <laughs> so you can remove that one quite easily. That's the cover plate with its little retaining washer. Inside, then, we can see we've got the rotor here, and then at the back here, we've got this chunky lump that's all closed off. Now, alternators are provided with rectification and brushes, and they're hiding under here. Quite often, in modern alternators, you'll find there's a plastic cover. You can take that off, and you can actually see those bits and pieces. With these slightly older designs, because this was a, a bit of an older model, then it's a little more difficult to get that out. but we're going to give it a go. There we go, it's coming. There we go. Awesome. So <laughs> this is the rotor. And you can see it's got this nice toothed thing here. And here are a couple of copper rings called the slip rings. Because in order to emulate a magnet, what it does is passes the current in the same direction, positive in, negative out, so to speak, uh, creating an electromagnet that is just as if it were a permanent magnet. Now, that it differs from a motor in that a motor uses commutation. So we're not using commutation here, we're using the slip rings to keep the current in the same direction. A commutator flips the current. So it's um, really quite fascinating how there are many different solutions to every single problem. Here we're creating a permanent magnet with a, a fixed magnetic field that we're rotating. In a motor we're uh, creating a rotating magnetic field, which I just think is really, really awesome stuff. It kind of shows me that there's um, no end of solutions depending on the problem you've got. Now, it's probably without a doubt if I went to the effort of buying a motor, it would be better than this. But this isn't my problem. I want a motor that costs me next to nothing, so I don't worry about mucking around with it. And because of that, this is a good solution for me. If you want to play around with these things and have motors that can run various bits, then it's a good solution for you. Anyway, having got that apart, what we really need to do is have a closer look at it. Okay, so there's the slip rings that we're talking about. As I say, the brushes touch those slip rings. Now, that's kind of important because you feed those brushes with a DC positive. And it 
uh, sorry, a DC current, and obviously it doesn't change direction, so you just attach one brush to the positive, one to the negative, it will go in the direction around the coil, turning this into a massive electromagnet. I have been told around about 2 to 4 amps is going to be good, so we'll set the voltage to drive a couple of amps through that, and we should get a pretty powerful magnet out of that. So that is going to be the rotor, and it's effectively a, perm a, a magnetic rotor, so very similar to um, BDLC motors, actually, but we do have these slip rings. If we look inside here, this is the body of the alternator, what we've got is the stator winding, there it is, all the way around there, and you'll see at the bottom here, we have three contact points, one, two, three. Those contact points are soldered on, and they go to the stator winding, so we need to unsolder that and take that out. Here we can just see the rectifier bridge, there's the diodes right there. So you can just see the rectifier bridge that's built in there, and there's also usually some voltage control on that, so we'll see if we can discover that. But there are the brushes to the slip rings right there, and they push in and out rather cleanly. The whole thing actually looks in like it's in nice condition. So the next tasks really are to desolder these, unscrew that, and see if we can get this electronic component out of there, because we just don't need it. Okay, so I've got the stator off, and you can see the three wires there. There, there and there. They're the coil windings that I'm going to want to connect to. And here's the bits of plastic that were in that. So they were all nestled in there and held in by four screws. I undid the four screws. All of that lifted out really easily. Now this bit here is clearly the brush. And there's the brush holders and that's a guide for the brush. So those bits are really important. So I didn't want to damage those bits. These bits, uh, it's the rectifier bridge and the voltage output control and a little cap for it. Don't care about those, don't need those. Under here, we had a little bit of electronics, no idea what it was, but I dug it out, because the only thing we need are the two brushes, and one goes to plus and one goes to minus. The stator identified those three wires, that's all you need to do. Those brushes, obviously, I'm going to solder to a DC power supply, um, plus, minus, and I took a notice, a note of which one was the bottom, because the bottom one went to the negative, the top one went to the positive, so that'll determine the um, direction of the current and the rotation. If we swap those over, it'll rotate in the opposite direction. So, I just took a note of those two to make sure that I knew which one, which way around it was. The rest of this I don't really care about, it's only um, spacing so that this thing ha gets held in place really rather nicely. So I'm going to screw those uh, back together once I've soldered this in. Because in order to get the brushes out, I had to desolder it from those pins there and there. And that made the brushes pop out along with the brush cover. Now, in this little section, every alternator is different. All you really want to do is protect anything that guides the brushes identify and take out the brushes and the stators are always going to be the same just identify the three wires that you need once you've done that you've got the thing basically apart the next thing to do is to put it back together in a way that we can use it as a motor okay this is a bit of an incidental but it's a cool little thing in order to solder these brushes back on obviously i have to put the springs on and i have to put them um, through the brush holder which is right here but they only go one way around, and there's a little retaining pin here. This is a 1.5 mil drill. It goes through a little hole, goes through that hole, and then the hole at the top. And that depresses the brushes once you feed the brush in, push it down and push your retaining pin down, and then you've got a nice length that you can actually solder and work with. Now you use that same hole when you're inserting the rotor. So you set it up exactly the same with the pin, put the rotor in, pull out the pin, and the brushes can go against the slip rings without breaking them. But it's a really cool little trick to be able to solder those back on to here without having to pull against <laughs> those springs, which would be an absolute nightmare, to be honest. Okay, so I've soldered a blue wire onto the bottom, a red wire onto the top, well, blue and brown. And these two will feed through any available hole, which is going to be like there. So just feed it through that hole there and then slot everything back together. Okay, so there we go, the brush modification's done, and these now will connect to my power supply, or a power supply, so that I can feed a current down the rotor and get that to be electromagnet. And I've just popped those bits back in, remembering the orientation, put in the screws, tightened them down, drilled a hole through the case and put on a zip tie, just as a bit of strain relief, really, in case they get tugged. And that's that bit done. 
So that bit's actually ready to go. I've nothing else to do with that now. I could put the other bits in if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. That looks really quite firm and quite nice. I've left the pin in. I'll take the pin out so the brushes spring back. But that's the brush modification done. And now we're on to the stator modification. Like I said, so three phase. It's been wired, I think. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to check, but I think it's a, a Y configuration. You can certainly see a coil there of three wires where it's been joined together we've got these nice three wires sticking out what we need to do is solder on some um, substantial wires to these to carry the current that this is going to need and then same thing poke it through a hole and reassemble everything and that's what we're going to do now so the only thing i've done with the stator is solder on these rather chunky wires onto the stator coils one two three uh, i've put the middle one as black so that i can recognize it well that's one reason the other reason is the wire that i used was um this stuff, it's actually battery jumper cable, and I only had enough length to do that in red, so that, well, it makes sense to do the middle in black. Anyway, I've soldered those on, put a heat shrink on there, and now it's time to feed it back into the bottom of the case. It goes in that way around, and we've removed a nice chunk of stuff here that we didn't need. So we've got three lovely little holes there that this will feed through. So that's the plan, is to pop that in there and feed those wires through. Now... Alternators differ a little bit in their um, specific construction, but they're all made to the same general plan. All you need to do with this is exactly what I've done. Add a couple of wires to your brushes, add three wires to your stator coil. However you can work that out with the particular alternator you've got, that's what you need to do. So I'm quite lucky in that they fit rather nicely through those holes and all I have to do is tug them down now and get that stator back into place. Okay, and there it is back together. Now, what I've got in here is an Allen key and that's feeding right the way through, holding those brushes um, back. And that means that I can put the rotor in there really easily and then pull out that pin and I don't snap the brushes. We can drop the rotor straight in there. Bit of gentle persuasion. Never hurts. And then the cap can go on. Just to make sure I've got that sound, actually. I forgot this. There we go. And now we can screw that back together and we have finished. So that is the motor conversion. Let's get that thing ready. Okay, so I've got it all finished, wired it all up, finally managed to find out it was in fact a Delta configuration. Apparently any sort of alternator sort of post-1990 is Delta configured. Some of the older ones you'll find in wide configuration and some you'll find where you've got individual wires and you have to wire it up into Delta. Um, but piece of cake. I mean, really, you saw how simple it was. Okay, so here it is all rigged up, and all I've really done is taken those three legs that we soldered on and I've attached them to an electronic speed controller. Now, the electronic speed controller I've got is this ridiculous little thing here. It's really meant for a, um, a helicopter, a radio helicopter, something like that. Um, the advice is for something like this, if you're going to use it as a serious motor, you need a speed controller rated about one and a half kilowatts or something like that. Uh, I've got this, I don't have a massive speed controller, so I'm going to use this. Um, so don't expect this to take off um, crazily. It's going to turn, it's going to turn relatively slowly because that's quite a powerful motor and we're not putting much energy in there. So it's not going to have an awful lot of dramatic appeal, but it does work, which is kind of cool. Now I've put um, 5 volts down on the rotor and uh, 17 volts on the stator. The advice is about 2 to 3 amps on the rotor, which is about 12 volts and about um, 36 to 48 volts on the stator and then you'll be able to get this thing with um, some quite serious oomph apparently. Now if I take my little um, speed controller and whack that up a little bit there we go isn't that awesome? I just think that's fantastic so I have a plan for this. I am actually going to get that speed controller and put this in something. Probably run it off our batteries. That's the idea at least, and that would be very cool. But 
it's a piece of cake to take an alternator, do the necessaries to it and turn it into a, multi, a, a motor. You might want to ask the question, why would you bother just buy a motor? Um, well, one thing is it's just fun to do. The other thing is these are really, really cheap. I mean, uh, I got this from a scrap car and it was given to me, so for nothing. You can buy them uh, from a scrapper for something like 10, 15 pounds or something like that. So it's a pretty good motor to do projects on where you're not spending an absolute fortune. And to be honest, it's a lot of fun to work out how these things work. It's almost hypnotic. Anyway, I thought I would show you with that. I hope you enjoyed watching and thank you very much.